class mods. That's it. That's all you need to know. Avoid them. Don't look at them. It's not worth it if you're a new DM. Just ignore it completely. All right, well, kind of. Maybe don't ignore them completely, but for those of you that have been around a while and been watching the channel, you know that I like to cover pretty much whatever I'm feeling talking about, whether that's anime, whether it's D&D, D&D News, Naruto 5e. Majority of the content, though, has leaned Naruto 5e, and something I've done a lot recently is talking about class mods, because those are what are getting a lot of updates and adjustments. That being said, this felt like a really good time, especially because I've been seeing some new faces in the comments and some new people commenting they want to start Naruto 5e and they want to get into it and blah blah blah. I would highly recommend ignoring the class mods at least for a good while in whatever campaign you may be running. Now, trust me, I can already hear you through the camera and in the comment section. Oh, but Bullzane, the class mods are the coolest part. We want our Mangeku Sharingans, and we want our Jinchirikis, and our Renegons, and our blah, 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 blah. I get it. I do, okay? They're really cool. They're really fun. Everyone wants those hyper crazy powers that make you this unstoppable fighting machine, and you can have them. But not in the beginning. And frankly, as a new DM, kind of what I was alluding to earlier, as, you know, we'll call it tip one for this video, just ignore them for now, all right? Let your players pick what they want, start your story up, and maybe you know that your story eventually involves a Renegon, okay? That's fine. For now, ignore it. Don't make it a big problem. Whenever you're starting a new D&D session, especially for a new DM, and even if you're an experienced Dungeons and Dragons DM, Naruto 5e has quite a few things that make it different, that alter it and make it a little bit more of a challenge, I think, at times with the resource management and combat and everything. So you got to be careful. So keep it as simple as possible, at least to begin with. I would say minimum to level five. Now, that's just me personally. Maybe you want to wait a little longer. Maybe you want to wait a little shorter, but that would be my minimum of wait till you hit at least that point to even introduce it. My other idea that I would strongly recommend to you, especially as, again, a new Naruto 5e DM, is whenever you introduce it, if you're wanting to do this, and if you're okay with there being maybe multiple Mangeku Sharingans or multiple Rinnegans or multiple Sealed Beasts, right? It really depends on what your universe is. Introduce it on an NPC first, toy around with it a little bit, then let your players have it. Because what this allows you to do is, one, Mid-game, you can kind of just alter it if you need to. Maybe you have an NPC that has a Jinchiriki inside them and you didn't realize quite how powerful this sealed beast is and how much amp it gives. So then, you know, in future you know sessions, future missions they go on, you don't have to involve that NPC and maybe they go off on their own mission for something or things like that. The other thing it lets you do is it lets you kind of start to like twist the gears and nozzles a little bit of it lets you manage it and see what works because one of the best things you can do and one of the coolest parts about just tabletop rpgs in general is the ability to alter and modify it i mean naruto 5e itself is just basically one gigantic homebrew it really is just a new system but for argument's sake a gigantic homebrew of DD fifth edition that's realistically what it is so whenever you have these different class mods and things on an NPC, you can start to give them more or less of whatever that class resource is. You can allow them to have more or less powers. You can kind of amp their stuff up or down, you know, whatever. You can just adjust it. It's really nice because when it's a player, if they have it and you notice they're too strong and you're like, okay, well now we got to tone it down, it feels really, really bad for them. Or even vice versa, if you give it to them and it just doesn't do as much as you wanted it to do and then all of a sudden they're amped even more some of your other players might feel kind of weird so like oh not only do they get this class mod but they get these random buffs too so big recommendation if you're gonna do it once you get to the point of like okay i'm comfortable enough with the system slap it on an npc and hey i can already hear you i know it won't work exactly the same as it would on a playable character but it at least lets you see what you're working with my other biggest thing that I would recommend, and I would probably do, honestly, if I were you, is just altering it, okay? And as I, you know, made the point previously of amping it up and down, things like that, don't be afraid to do that. I think sometimes people get really worried when it comes to, like, changing rules and bending too many things because it starts to go away from what it originally was. But who cares? The point of a TTRPG and the point of doing these things with your friends or your group or whatever the case may be is to have fun. The whole intention of it is to have a good time with everybody involved. And if that means you got to tweak a few systems and tweak a few rules, 
then do it. Who cares, right? So don't be afraid to turn into what you want it to be. And it can be something as simple as like if you put a curse mark on someone, maybe you change the way it negatively affects them because maybe they didn't get it from just like another shinobi. So it, you know, amping the power of the person that gave it to them doesn't make sense. All right, well, make it give them like a pseudo cancer like Itachi gets, right? Some kind of like shinobi illness thing. My other two things I want to mention with this. The second to last being understand that once you give one of these class mods to another character, others are going to want one as well. Let's ignore the power amp. Let's pretend you completely stripped it of its power and made it purely a story element. If you give your Uchiha player, you know, let's say you got two other players, the Mongeku Sharingan, and they have this really cool story moment where they awaken it, and the other two players are just chilling, doing their thing, they don't get any kind of amp, any kind of special whatever, it's gonna feel really bad. And that's a very easy mistake that I think a lot of DMs can make is accidentally creating a pseudo main character so understand as soon as you introduce one you're more than likely going to introduce others because you know if you don't the table just doesn't feel very good my very last and pretty important side of this is make at least some of them story relevant if you have all of these really cool powers and things but they're kind of just sitting there in this weird void of like oh hey you unlocked mangeku sharingan because you worked really hard so now you're strong it doesn't feel cool kind of the same thing with something like a jinchiriki like having a ginormous ancient powerful beast implanted into your body is no small feat and frankly it should have some kind of powerful impact same thing with like a curse seal yeah you can get this curse from something but make that something matter make it affect them maybe the curse doesn't directly affect them but maybe people see them differently maybe they walk into a village and those sensory type ninjas are like you know whoa what's what's going on with our boy over there he's smelling mighty cursed right and then they all treat him weirdly and kind of ostracize him and that's something they have to deal with that's a big thing you can do as well is just make it story relevant not only because it's more fun that way but because it just makes sense having things that are as strong as this now i know this wasn't like the longest craziest most intriguing video we've ever seen in the world but this was just kind of as a warning to all of our new faces all the people that haven't done naruto 5e before and maybe they're really wanting to get into it just be careful what you do with them, okay? It's very easy to see them and not realize how powerful they can get. And it's very easy to get caught up in the nonsense of like, oh man, I want all these crazy cool things. And really the last thing I would keep in mind as a DM is understand your players are going to have a lot to deal with as well because they're going to want to work as a team and they're already having the balancing act of figuring out how their classes and their clans intertwine together, but now also how the Mangeku Sharingan can help Sage Mode, can help the Sage Beast, Jinchiriki? Like, it's, it's a lot. So understand that it's not just affecting you, it's affecting the table. So be sure that everybody is ready for it. But nonetheless, that's all I got for you today. But I do have a, a little thing to say. All right, and Friday there's going to be an official announcement video that you can look forward to. But uh, this Saturday, Grand Finals, okay? For those of you that haven't been keeping up, I have a Naruto 5e League that I have been running. The very first, at least to my knowledge, Naruto 5e League. And the final two teams are competing in Grand Finals this Saturday, 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, for a $150 pot. This is not a joke. This is not a meme. This is for real. This is it. This is top dog stuff. And not only do you get a prize, but you are unarguably the best Naruto 5e team. I mean, statistically speaking, you're the best. There's no other, you know, stat to prove it. So if you want to come out and see, I highly recommend it. It's going to be a blast, going to be fun. I am very excited to see. Both teams have had two weeks of prep time. So hopefully they come in swinging to know what they're doing. But Anywho, I hope y'all enjoy. Hopefully I will see y'all on that Saturday stream. And hey, check out the fun promotional video Friday. And I will see you all on the next one. Peace out.